Hello again, here we are. Yet another card using a jelly plate print. Um, I'm, I'm gradually getting through my stack. This time I've chosen this rather bold looking um, purple one. And what I have done in preparation for this video is just to stick a piece of card on the back to give it a bit more substance. I used just a glue stick which I rubbed all over the back of the paper, stuck the card on top, and then just went over with a brayer just to make sure that it was absolutely stuck down all over. So what I intend doing this time is to use this set of dies, which are either memory box or poppy stamp. I know there are allied companies, but I'm, I'm not quite sure which one it is. It's one of the two. And, um, this one cuts the apertures and this one cuts matching filigree um, images to fit in those apertures. So what I propose doing is to make an aperture in this card uh, panel at the front with this one, cut out um, some butterflies from this one to insert and then do a filigree one in gold just to pop on the top. So um, hopefully it shouldn't take very long to do this one. So we'll just see how we go. I'll bring this in just a little bit further so you can see a little of what's going on. I think, I think you can see a bit. Okay, so this panel was cut with a Sizzix framelit nesting die and it just happens to fit British sizes. I think they do one for America but um, this one certainly fits British ones which saves a lot of time. If things don't fit I have to do a bit of elongating or shortening or whatever. Okay I think that's in position. We'll cut this out. Oh, just let me check and I can't see sideways. Yeah, it looks all right. I find it difficult to see around the corner now, and now I may have moved it. I tend to eyeball things most of the time, and usually they're okay, but there are times when uh, I get it slightly wrong. Okay, so I've taken the apertures out of the front panel. Now I want to cut some to fit into it. I want to inlay this time. And in order to see what I'm doing, I've, as before, cut a copy paper one so I can use it as a window over this one to see where I like some quite nice places, actually. All very different. You get a different effect with each card you made using it in different places quite like I think I quite like that there at the bottom so I'm going to pop that into my die cutting machine put this over the top into the gap where the window is showing what I want and I'm just going to cut that out There we go. Now then, in order to inlay those pieces into here, I'm going to turn it over to the back, get some regular scotch tape and put it over the back of the apertures. All over the back, like that. Three pieces should probably do it. There, yeah, three pieces have done it. Put away my tape. Now get my pieces of, oh, when it hasn't gone through, let me do that again. I need it to be a bit, didn't cut right through all the layers. It's because I've got card and paper, I suspect. Let's try again. Doesn't cut this time without a shim. 
that done it? Still not absolutely crisp. It's, it's very, very thick with it's rather hefty card. I don't like very much and I wanted to uh, get rid of, which is why I've done that. I'll just put a shim on. This is a thin metal shim sent to me by a company when their die didn't cut very well. Let's see if we got through it this time. Looks like that's done it. There's my three butterflies. Okay, I'm just going to pop these into the gaps. I keep forgetting to look and see if you can see. Okay, so there are my three. Aren't they pretty? Now to make a filigree layer to go inside and I'm going to cut that from some gold mirror card. That's the wrong one. This is the filigree one. Oh good grief Christine. Get, get a grip girl. Right. Cut out these. This should cut first time hopefully. Let's have a look see how it's done. Yeah they're right there. They are done beautifully. That has stuck to my plate. I don't like to grab it with my fingers because you can bend the die cut. You just get something sharp underneath, then it will do it. Right, now I need to get rid of the little insert bits, of which there are quite a few. And I've got a little tip to tell you in a minute or two that was uh, given to me by one of my subscribers, for which I was very grateful. The simplest of things, and I hadn't actually thought about it. But uh, that's all of those out. What I'm going to use to attach these to the card is... Um, Micro dots. Various companies make them. The ones I have were made by a company called Sticks to Anything. And uh, you can use them over and over again. But when, when they are new, <laughs> the two sheets are so tightly um, attached to each other that it's really hard to separate them. So... Um, here's my piece. This one has been used several times and you can see there's a great mark in the corner. But the suggestion that was given to me is once you have found an opening, just put in a little piece of tape or paper or anything just so that you can open it again easily. <laughs> it's the simplest thing, but it makes so much sense. So um, I don't need to do it with this one as it's been opened many times and um, I think that just making sure there are some dots still left where I'm placing these you can see them you can see them um, all right cover it over rub down to make sure they're attached and then you have to lift in the pretty much in the direction that you're You've put them down, otherwise you might tear them coming, taking them off. Okay, let's try this one. I don't want to take the sheet off completely because, um, there we go. Because it's difficult to get them back into the same place. There we go. There's the big one. Let's put the big one in position. Oh, it does look rather splendid, doesn't it? There we go. These these micro dots do work so well. Let's get the next one. Anything delicate, intricate like this, they're brilliant for. There we 
we go. Number two. It's the simplest of things, this card, but it looks really quite <laughs> spectacular. I think you've done a really good job when you've finished. Let me get underneath this one. There we go. Oops. Lovely. Yeah. Now, for a sentiment, I could use a bit more of the print. I could use a bit of the gold. I could use perhaps one of those dies that has um, a, a shadow. You know, you have the word and then a, a, like a, a backing for it. Could use one of those, one with one and one with the other. I'm not sure. But first of all, let me just stick this onto the front of the card. My old faithful um, double-sided tape, foam tape. That one's got a hair stuck in it. There we go. And the last piece, I, I might put some across the middle of this one as well, actually, because of uh, because of those just to reinforce the, the fact that they're stuck. Okay, there we are. I'll take the back off this. It's one of the quicker ones, this one, I think. Okay. Now, as ever, a little bit of glue stink over the top of the adhesive on here because it's so strong it'll grab the card whether, if it's in the right place or not. So, here's my card front. Here's my panel. Rest it on my pointy fingers. Position it. Now, this one. Ha ha ha. This one looks to me like I haven't cut it incredibly accurately it, it looks like it's not going to be equidistant all the way around so what I'll do is make it equidistant on three sides this side is a trifle too wide what I will do now is just trim a bit off with my, in, with my guillotine So now it's good. Um, now, sentiment. I'm not sure what to do about a sentiment. I'll think about it. I may even stamp on in purple. But uh, there you go. That was a quick one. Again, beautiful bit of detail inside there. Um, a quick card using a jelly plate print for a CAS card. Thanks so much for watching.